All right, guys, uh, we're going to do something a little different today. We've not dealt with any of these heaters. It's getting cold out here, so I uh, get a lot of call for uh, heater service. Uh, before we get started, obviously, we want to talk about safety. Um, this is a fueled heater. It's multi-fuel, runs on a several different items, uh, kerosene, diesel, such as that. You want to make sure, always check, smell the fuel, make sure it's not gasoline. Uh, I've had some guys actually put gasoline in them. You don't want to run that because uh, you're liable to die. So check it to make sure it is something other than gasoline. Once you've checked that, then uh, uh, wear your safety glasses, get proper ventilation while you're in your shop, so that way you don't die. We don't want to die. I don't want you to die. So uh, with all that being said, uh, as I typically tell you in my other videos, uh, there is no substitute for a good certified technician to take a look at your equipment, but there are some things that uh, the average person can do for themselves. So um, if, if you feel competent, by all means, take a look at your equipment. Uh, but there does come a time and a place when you do need to get a certified technician to take a look at your equipment. So <clears throat> I've already taken the screws out of the body here so you can look on the inside. Now, not all heaters are exactly the same, but they're very similar in a lot of respects. Now, when your heater, <coughs> excuse me, when, you, when your heater is not operating, what you'll see, you'll turn it on, uh, it'll run, and it may shut off without igniting, or it may ignite and then uh, burn for a few seconds and then shut back off. So, there's several different reasons why some of these things will happen. So the first thing you want to do when you plug it in and turn it on, there's a gauge on the back of most of these here. You want to ensure that the gauge is actually, it's an air gauge, that it increases in pressure to around 5 to 6 PSI, depending on the machine that you're using. Uh, if that is actually working, then you know that your, your air pump is on, on the back is actually functioning like it should. <clears throat> the way these work, the fan spins, it runs this pump on the back, it blows air through this hose, the hose will pop up here onto your nozzle, um, the air blows out through the nozzle and siphons fuel from here. Inside of the combustion chamber there's a nozzle, it will blow out in a mist, here is an igniter, this is one that is a continuous spark style uh, igniter. You also have some that are like glow plugs that will glow red hot to ignite the fuel. This one is a, a spark style. Uh, there's also another one that's a spark style that looks just like a spark plug. This sensor here, it registers the color of the flame. If the flame is not the proper color, it will shut the system off because it's not burning properly. And I'm going to pull this cover off here. I've already pulled the screws out for time. When you pull this off, you can see you got a circuit board here and there's not much you're going to do here other than there is a fuse right here which you'll know if that's working or not because your board may or may not turn on that white hexagon with the black hose that's running down into your fuel tank and that's a fuel line and if you see this other line right I'll get my pointer here this right here this is your air line and it's running back along here and comes back out here so the problem I got with this one you turn it on, it'll run, never ignite, and it'll shut off. We're going to do it real quick just so you can see what we got. So you hear the igniter. You'll hear the fan. You can see the purple ignition. And you can see white haze coming out. That's fuel, raw fuel. All right. So it's not igniting. It should have ignited pretty quickly. We're not getting ignition. So the first thing I do is I look at all the fuel lines and the air lines to make sure there's no cracking. Now what I did notice on this one, right off the bat, you can see right in here, we've got some crack lines and there's actually one right here. So even though we're getting good air pressure on the back side, we may not be getting enough pressure through here to here for in order to uh, ignite. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, pull this line loose and cut this little small section off and reattach it so that that air uh, crack in the uh, air line is has been eliminated. I looked at this in here and I don't see anything here but I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at it closer. 
you pinch these clips off and obviously you just pull your hose out, twist your hose and then it'll pull off that barb. Same thing here. And I don't mix these up because if you mix them up, it's never going to ignite. This is your air line. This is your fuel line. So I'm going to hit pause on the video for a minute. Um, and I don't normally like doing, I like doing a complete run through, but this is a little difficult with the heater because I don't have a stand to hold my camera in place. Uh, so be back just shortly. All right. So I cut that little section out, put the hose back on. Um, now I'm going to come over here because uh, I went ahead and turned it on and it's still doing exactly the same thing, but my fluid pressure, uh, does seem to have increased. Uh, you can tell by the amount of, uh, excess fuel blowing out of the front of the machine. So I'm going to remove these here, same situation, remove the clips, pull the hoses off and, uh, then we're going to take, cause I'm thinking uh, possibly the, uh, nozzle is clogged. Uh, or distorting the uh, the fuel being introduced into the chamber here so it's not getting good contact with the igniter. So I'm going to remove this, and remove this, and take a screwdriver right here, remove this, pull these off, and remove this. And be careful with this because this is ceramic. You don't want to break this piece right here. Uh, if you break that, then you got to replace it. So just be careful when you're pulling this off. I'm going to go ahead and pull these items off here, and then I'll be back again all right so I got the wires removed I got the hoses removed I went ahead and pulled the screw out of here and just carefully pull this out like I say it's ceramic so we don't want to break it and there's an arc that jumps between these two electrodes as the fuel blows through and that's what's going to ignite your uh, your fire so we're gonna set this to the side now you can see there's a screw here and there's a screw right over here and there's another one down at the bottom we're going to pull these three screws out to remove this body right here all right so the screws are out so this will just come right off now you pull this off and this is what it looks like inside you can see the uh the brass nozzle is right here and we're going to put a socket on it you'll see there's put a socket on it we're going to pull this off and check to make sure there's no trash inside of here so you just hold the body put your socket on here and remove this uh directly from the body housing okay so when you're taking this apart just be careful because it is cast aluminum material here it can be problematic it can crack or break pretty easily so if you're not careful and you put too much pressure on it while you're trying to unscrew this, you can break one of the tabs off or crack the housing. So just be careful taking it apart. So you unscrew it the rest of the way. You pull this out. This is what the inside of this looks like. So you got a hole on the back side and it goes all the way through to here and there's a chamber looks like a, a tap screwed into here. You'll unscrew this tap from this head here. Again, this is all brass, so be careful unscrewing these two items here. All right, so like I said, you, you wanna be careful here. Get in front of the camera. Don't, don't damage any of the brass, but you'll put the socket on here and you'll hold this with a, a, a nylon pliers or something to keep from damaging the brass. Once you unscrew it all the way, be careful because there's another item inside of here. But you'll see this is basically a barrel. You can see straight down through it when it's clear, which is what you want to do. And we'll set that to the side. And then in here, yeah, it's not going to come out. Any, any other time it fall right out. So we'll push down the side of the hole here. Push that out. You have this little item right here. And this is a nozzle. You see grooves in it where the air will come around it, create a vortex, and siphon the fuel out of this. So what we want to do, we want to look through it to make sure it's clear, which it is not. And this in here should be clear as well. So I'm going to hit these with the air real quick.
when you hit them with the air, make sure you hold on to that small piece so it don't blow away. Now I can see through it. And we're not 100% for sure that this was the issue, that there's a piece of trash in it, but it certainly is not going to help with the process. So now we're going to put this all back together. I'll put the piece on here like that, and you see the shape of it. Now this is going to be very similar to most heaters. Not all heaters, but most heaters. So we're going to stick this back inside the housing. Force it in the, the hole. Actually, you know what? Let's do this instead. This will work a little easier. I'm gonna dump it back out in the hand. And this is this is clear all the way through because it's a much larger hole. We're just gonna put it on the barrel like so. We'll put the cap back on, the nozzle back on, and we'll screw it together hand tight. Now I'm going to bring it over here to the, where my pliers are at. I'm going to tighten it up just, just a touch. You don't want to over tighten. If you over tighten this brass, you'll damage it. <clears throat> and then you'll be replacing that as well. So now we're tight. So now we're going to put this look down in here. We'll take, I'm going to blow inside of the holes here just to make sure. There's nothing in there. Put this back on like so. Tighten it up. Tight. So now we're going to reinstall this back on the heater and then we'll be right back. All right, so I got the housing back in place. There's three screws to hold it in. I went ahead and put the uh, airline fuel line back on. Now I'm going to reinstall the igniter body and the two igniter wires. It's just run the screw back on. Do not over tighten this screw because if you do you'll crack the ceramic housing and you'll be buying another igniter. Put that on. We'll put the two uh, igniter wires on. The order doesn't matter on those. We'll be right back. Okay so we, now we got your igniter wires hooked back up. The body's hooked back into place. All the fuel lines and air lines look good. Uh, we still got the cover off of the uh, board here but that's just in case there's something beyond what we have identified as trash in the nozzle. So we've repaired uh, a, a cut in a break in the airline here, a small hole, and uh, we did identify trash being in the nozzle. So now we're going to plug it in right here. Let's see what we get. Uh, we got the igniter. Should have the fan. So it appears we found the problem. Um, so basically we just need to put it back together again. If it came off the machine, make sure you put it back on the machine. The parts are not suggestions by the manufacturer. They're supposed to be on there for a reason. Find all your screws, nuts, bolts, and everything. Put them all back in place. Uh, make sure you didn't leave anything inside of the body. And again, I appreciate you watching the videos. If you've got any questions or if there's something in particular you want to see, uh, feel free to give me a, uh, a request on the comments. Otherwise, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Be safe, and always check with a certified repair shop when you have an issue. Thank you.